How's it going everyone? Ben here and today we're going to be looking at ways to stop your menstrual cycle without going on testosterone. Now the reason why I want to make this video is because I know a lot of trans people, either non-binary or trans mask, don't want to undergo full-on testosterone replacement therapy because of how drastically testosterone changes your body's physiology. Now I'm going to use this opportunity to say that every trans person is different, every trans person's dysphoria and how they handle their dysphoria is different. So um, get rid of the assumption that every trans person medically transitions. Not everyone takes estrogen, not everyone takes testosterone, Everyone has their own way of handling with their gender dysphoria. Some don't even have gender dysphoria. So that's why I'm making this video for people specifically that have dysphoria around their menstrual cycle, but they don't necessarily want to masculinize themselves. So luckily there's actually quite a number of ways for us to stop periods without taking on testosterone. And I'm going to be going over each and every single one and also the pros and cons between them. So the first way someone can stop their periods if they are trans is to take oral contraceptives, otherwise known as birth control, which is the layman term. I'm not really fond of the term birth control because birth control is used for a number of medical conditions that people may have and birth control helps with that but birth control is a way that someone can stop their periods without masculinization so there's actually a couple of different combinations of birth control that's accessible for someone to take you can take an estrogen only type of pill to stop your periods however for some trans masks estrogen the thought of taking estrogen is dysphoric in itself so luckily there are progestin only versions of birth control that you can take which is which doesn't use estrogen at all and only uses progestin which is another hormone that you can use to stop periods you can use a combined pill that includes d different concentrations of estrogen and progestin also if you don't like pills you can take a once weekly patch and a once every three months injection now as far as the advantages and disadvantages if you take them orally you have to take them every single day which can be a little bit of an annoyance if you are the type of person to forget if you use the weekly patch even though you have you have the opportunity to only apply it once a week the patch can cause contact dermatitis and rashes underneath the patch so not a lot of people who are skin sensitive can use the patch actually this is the same problem i expressed and the testosterone patches video. And lastly, the intramuscular three, once every three months Depo Vera shot. If you're not a fan of shots, then obviously you're not going to like getting the once every three months. However, it gives you the most amount of time to not even think about any type of medication that you're taking. Also with the intramuscular shot, most often you have to go to your provider to get that shot done, which is probably a lot more expensive than going to the pharmacy and picking up your prescriptions. Now the biggest health downside when it comes to taking any form of estrogen related pills to stop your menstruation is the fact that estrogen in itself is something that thickens your blood. So there's going to be a really really small chance of it causing a blood clot. I will say that if you are taking a combination pill with progestin or a progestin only pill that complication probability goes down by a lot and also it's rare in it by itself and it is treatable luckily but it is something that one should be aware of if they want to take estrogen pills to stop their periods also someone that i know personally that takes birth control pills to stop their periods for gender dysphoria but not necessarily takes testosterone is my partner hello i'm eating an orange now another way that you can stop your periods is using an intrauterine device such as a ring or an IUD. A Nuva ring is something that you can insert yourself and take it out and it has to be done monthly. There's a combination of hormones in it but the Nuva ring helps a lot with people's bleeding especially people who bleed a lot. But your mileage may vary on whether or not it completely stops your periods. A lot of people have reported that their periods got significantly lower. The IUD on the other hand is inserted once every five years. It is done at your 
OBGYN or primary care provider's office, so they have to insert the IUD themselves and take it out, which makes it pretty, pretty, pretty expensive if you don't have insurance. But if you do have insurance, it is a pretty no hassle way to stop your periods. IUDs are mostly progesterone and progestin based, but there are some IUDs that are both combination based. There is also the copper IUD, but I do not recommend anybody who wants to stop the, or lighten their periods to get the copper I, IUD because it doesn't have any hormones in it. So it'll probably not affect your period flow that much. As far as the disadvantages, Nuva rings and IUDs are obviously going to be much more expensive because IUD specifically is going to be a lot more expensive because it's a procedure. And some people might have varying results with the intrauterine devices. Some people might have much lighter periods. Some people might have their periods completely go away over time. However, there is a very, very small number of people where the IUD doesn't work at all and they continue to bleed. And to have it taken out again because it's not working is pretty annoying and very, very costly. And another huge disadvantage with the IUD is a lot of people, most people I know personally that have had it implanted have told me that it's pretty, pretty painful the first time they get it done. But I do think that overall for most people, IUDs can be very beneficial. And the fact that you will only have to worry about it once every five years is a huge plus point. The next Thing you can get done to stop your periods or heavily reduce it is a new technology called an endometrial ablation. This is a procedure so you have to go into the office to get it done and you might be on general anesthesia, actually you most likely will be under anesthesia for this procedure and it's minimally invasive. The doctor will take a, a device and put it inside and kind of destroy the endometrial lining and what that does is that it keeps that lining from regenerating, which essentially what causes periods when that, when that lining thickens up and then sheds itself. So when they cut it back to the point where it can't regenerate anymore, you greatly, greatly reduce your periods. And for some people, it completely eliminates it. Drawbacks for the endometrial ablation include that it's very expensive, again, without insurance. And two, you're gonna feel mild spotting and feel pain in the first couple of months after you have your procedure done. I will put in my two cents that if I ever had to stop using testosterone, I would 100% absolutely use the endometrial ablation procedure because it fixes the problem that I have and I don't have to think about it ever again. And lastly, the most invasive procedure you can get done to stop your periods is either an ophorectomy or a complete hysterectomy. An ophorectomy is a surgical procedure to remove the ovaries. The hormones that the ovaries secrete are what causes menstruation and thickens the endometrial lining, but it will put you into complete menopause after you get this procedure done in addition to the hysterectomy. So when you are in complete menopause, you will have to be on lifelong drugs to make sure your bone density doesn't decrease. And you may or may not need hormone replacement therapy with estrogen and progestin. Although the ophorectomy, there are ways to have a minimally invasive procedure done. Minimally invasive meaning there's not going to be a lot of cutting and there's not going to be a lot of scars. However, the hysterectomy is probably the most invasive procedure out of all the ones I'm talking about. And there's also a lot of complications that can happen with the hysterectomy. That's why the hysterectomy should be only emphasized in people with severe dysphoria and also when they have a medical condition where a hysterectomy may be beneficial. Hysterectomies will also cause permanent scars that you will have to tend to similar to my top surgery scars and also the fact that the recovery process is probably the longest that it's going to take compared to all the other procedures I talked about. Anyways, that's a complete rundown of all the ways you can minimally reduce your period or completely stop it without undergoing testosterone replacement therapy. I hope you learned and got a lot of information from this video. I hope you will share it with someone that may benefit from this information. And I hope that you tune into my other videos to get more information. Please share, like my video, follow me on Instagram and Twitter to keep up with my daily life. And I'll see you in the next video. This is Ben.